So I got the car up in the air. Uh, a cheap alternative if you don't have jacking rails, just buy a hockey puck. You can get a whole pack of them for real cheap on Amazon. They do bust, or they have been on me, uh, because the frame rail will actually cut through them. But uh, if anyone else has some kind of cheap alternatives to protect the frame rails, uh, or I'm sorry, the pinch welds, let me know. So the first step whenever you bleed your brakes um, or swap the brake fluid, it calls to drain the, uh, siphon out the old brake fluid as much as you can through the top here. No way you're not putting the older stuff through the system. We'll basically take this out as much as we can out of here and then go ahead and put fresh brake fluid in. You always want to be real careful. Brake fluid is really corrosive and will eat paint. It's, it's some nasty stuff. we take the new brake fluid and I'm using Motul. I really like their stuff. I used it in a motorcycle for a while. Um, and this is the 600. So hopefully this will prevent me from boiling the brake fluid at the track. Alright, so now they say to screw on the lid with the power bleeder empty and then pressurize the system to 15 psi. Just make sure there's no leaks. Alright, so I'm going to pressurize this to 15 psi. Alright, that's at 15 PSI, so we're going to let that sit there for a minute and make sure that it doesn't drop any. Alright, so there's no leak in the system, so we're going to go ahead and relieve the pressure by twisting off the top slowly and it'll start to release. There's no release valve on this one, like a lot of pump sprayers for home use. So you just loosen this up until it starts to release pressure like that. Those. Now we're going to remove this and we're going to put about two quarts of brake fluid into the motive tank. So I have about half of a bottle or so left from topping off the reservoir. Put that in there. And then I'll go get a fresh bottle and dump that in there also. Went ahead and got three liters. Uh, I'll probably actually go ahead and put all of these in there just because I don't want to stop what I'm doing and 
once I get started. And with the, uh, the brake fluid in the car, I mean, it only has 5,000 miles on it. I'm only doing this because I need brake fluid that can take a higher temperature. So it's kind of hard to distinguish between new and old fluid. So I'll probably go ahead and use all three liters um, and just really make sure that I flush all of the fluid through. Second. I said these were a liter, it's actually a pint. Put the top back on. Screw it on nice and tight so there's no leak. We're going to start pressurizing, pressurizing this back to 15 PSI. You'll start to see the fluid come out the hose and go into the reservoir, which is exactly what we want. We don't want any air in the system. You can start to see it here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It's starting to come up now and go into the reservoir. Okay, so now that the, the uh, motive tank is full and pressurized to 15 PSI, I'm going to crack loose the inside bleeder valve first. Hey, Daddy. And then we're going to do the outside. Hey, Daddy. We're going to do it again and tap the caliber make sure there are no air bubbles in the crossover tubes. What are you doing? What are you doing? 
I'm tapping the brake caliber to make sure there's no air in the crossover tubes. Can you do it? This is a big no, camera. I just, I just did. Hey, okay. Now we're going to switch camera. over to the other side. Pinch off the hose, pull it off, let it drain into the canister down there, and then put it on the outer bleeder valve. Go get a rag, wipe that up. Can you get a rag? You got one right here, buddy. As I was telling him earlier, Colin, you really don't want to mess with uh, brake fluid. Yeah. It's corrosive stuff. Mm -hmm. oh. So now we do the outside. I got it. Thank you, bud. Watch this. See, you're going to start seeing brake fluid come up through here whenever I crack this loose. I'll just hold the bottle. Ready? See? Can I do it? No, this is this is a job for Daddy. But I want to do it. I wanna, can you get it off for of me? Please. Here, come here. Actually, you need to finish your popsicle wood. Caliber. Close it off. What's mommy? Probably went inside. Pinch the hose, pull it off of the uh, bleeder valve, let it run back in. And then I'm going to stick this on the vent tube of the bottle while I go check the motive tank and make sure that we're good on pressure and fluid there. Alright, so the pressure went from 15 to about 12 or so, so I'm going to pump this back up to 15 and move on to the next caliber. And do each caliber a couple times, and then uh, then check, make sure we're good on fluid. So one thing that I want to point out, that was kind of neat, uh, if I can get it to work a little bit better, is they actually have a little hook on the brake line. I'm going to light on, and you can actually hang the brake bleeder bottle um, off of that hook, which is really convenient. So now we're on the driver's side rear. Uh, the process is exactly the same. We're going to start on the inside bleed screw, bleeder valve, pop that loose. I've checked the mode of tank at the top, make sure it was a 15 psi still, pumped it back up. We're gonna hold this for about 35 40 minute, uh, seconds. We're gonna hold this for about 35 40 seconds. Pinch off the hose, 
let it drain into the bottle, move it over to the front or the outer bleed valve, and do the same thing there. Tap it just to make sure there aren't any air bubbles. And then cross over to something that's new to me. I've never had to worry about it before. Um, just because I've never had high performance brakes like this that are nice and have uh, a crossover tube and a bleeder valve on each side. I'll pinch it off. And we're going to come over. I have plenty of fluid today because I wanted to make sure to, that I got all of the stock stuff out. So we're going to flip it back over to the inner one. We're going to do that one again just to make sure there is no air. Make sure we have all of the, uh, the stock brake fluid out of it, the system. This step probably isn't necessary since I am just replacing the stock fluid and not uh, didn't do any work to the caliber. But if since I'm about to take it to the track, I really just want to make sure that it'll be good and that I won't have any issues with my brakes because definitely don't want to do that. Switch it back over to the outer one for one last time on this wheel. We're going to clean the two rear calibers up, uh, get all the brake fluid off there, because like I said before, it's really corrosive, it's really nasty stuff. Looks like this brake fluid actually is noticeably different. Um, like I said, the, the stock fluid wasn't old by any means, it was only 5,000 miles. This at least seems to be a lot more clear in the tube than the, uh, the stock fluid was. So I actually probably, uh, if I have enough fluid when I'm left, when I'm finished, if I have enough fluid left over in the uh, bleeder, motive bleeder uh, tank up top, then I think I'll probably come around and do this all again and just make sure that all that stock fluid is out of there. Now these front uh, brake calibers are massive. I want to say the front rotors are 15 and a half inches in diameter. And the backs are 15. So one thing to note here on the front is because of this lip, um, you can't use the pipe wrenches. Um, so you have to use a normal wrench, but just be careful. Uh, make sure you got the right size. I think that's all new fluid there. So again, tap the caliber just like we did the back ones. Make sure there's no air in there from the crossover tube. Tighten that up. Switch back to the back again, just to do a second uh, second round here on this front caliber, just to make sure that we're good there. Tank's almost already full. We got a lot of this this caliber. that one off. Snug it up pretty good because I have a feeling we're pretty much finished here. Need to pump up the front again, or the main tank. <coughs> back to 15 we're about out of fluid too actually so I don't think I'll have a chance to run through the whole thing again I might
try the uh, take a look at the rear passenger one more time since that was the first one that I did and just make sure that it looks like all new fluid coming out of it Looks like we're good there. Start that up. Fluid drain back in there. So with this one, I just put it on the bolt uh, for the sway bar end link back there. So I was actually able to go around one more time and completely bleed them. And so far I've filled up the three bottles, uh, the three pints that I used to uh, in, in the Motive power bleeder. So I think that I pretty much got all the, the old fluid out and uh, filled it up with new fluid. One thing I wanted to show real quick see if I can get this on camera and I learned this from another youtuber uh, so zoom in on that bleeder valve so one thing I learned from another youtuber called uh, I believe his channel is auto fanatic um, get these little dabbers and I'll show you the, the product in a minute um, but it looks like this and you can actually take it and stick it down in the bleeder valve and it'll knock out any brake fluid that's sitting in that bleeder valve so I don't know if you saw that on camera but um, it's really nice to just kind of prevent any brake fluid from getting anywhere else uh, with that little bit in there and I just use simple green to clean it up I mean that's what I use on the floor and stuff if I spill anything uh, I don't know if it's the best thing to use on the calipers themselves but I've never had an issue but like I said this is the first time I've ever owned a car with high performance calibers uh, and a car that I actually care a little bit more about it uh, staying clean and in good shape and while I'm here I'm just uh, wiping off some of the brake dust also all right now that that's all cleaned up just make sure it's good and snug and we are good to go I replace the rubber caps just make sure nothing happens there And that was the last caliber. So the things uh, that I was talking about to get the brake fluid out of the, the caliber are these little disposable um, applicators. They call them micro applicators. Um, I'll put a link down in the description uh, to all of the stuff that I got um, to do this job. Okay, now that that's finished, I'm going to... Uh, release the pressure out of the, the bleeder and get any sort of fluid I'm just wrapping some shop towels around the master reservoir just in case anything uh, leaks out so you release the fluid let's move this over here easier focusing. I need to work on how to get this thing to focus a little bit better. So we're going to release the pressure and the power bleeder by untwisting this just like we did earlier. There 
It's starting to drop now. So we've released all the pressure out of the bleeder. Trying to see how much fluid's in there. Shouldn't be much, if any. Yeah, so the tank is pretty much empty. There's a little bit left in the bottom. Which is good. That just means that we actually used all the fluid, what we were supposed to, and uh, got rid of all of the fluid that was in there before. So now we're going to twist this here. There's some fluid in this line. I might try to actually try to get some of this to come back into the leader tank by putting it on the ground get some of this to fall down and stay away from uh, getting it on the paint use this fender protector I have and release the cap they did a really good job of putting a swivel fitting on this thing so it's easy to turn it really would be a pain if they didn't have that a little bit in the cap but it's actually not much at all so we're gonna go set this aside and check the brake level brake fluid level wipe up anything that dripped off which doesn't look like much did Like it's right at max. So I think we're good. We don't need to top it off or anything. I'd be a little bit above max. If so, I'll just bleed some out or uh, siphon some out. So one trick: if you can't see very well, if you just take a light and you set it on top. See if the camera picks that up. It might not. Um, Scoot this in some more. Dial down the exposure a little bit. So before I couldn't really see 100% where the fluid is. So if you put a light on top of it, you'll start to see there trying to get the camera to pick that up it's kind of difficult but it shows me that the fluid is right here at the max level so I'm actually going to leave it there so we're going to put the uh, stock cap back on now make sure it's good and snug then I'm going to put the wheels back on and go for a drive and just make sure everything's okay make sure the brakes work good make sure there are no leaks which there shouldn't be uh, and then I have an autocross event tomorrow. Um, just going to test it out there. And then I have a track event at the end of the month, uh, beginning of August, actually.